Hi, good morning. My name is Stein. I will be presenting today's We Read for You at the University of Stellenbosch Business School Executive Development. I'll be talking about a book that I wrote myself called Strategic Thinking Game Over. Basically dealing with the current ways in which businesses are thinking strategically and introducing some new ways of facing today's challenges in the business environment. A revised version of my presentation follows. Strategic Thinking Game Over, the the book as such comes alive in the context of this Chinese wish. May you live in interesting times. Because I regard this as a very appropriate way in which to describe the challenges of business in postmodern uh, society in terms of the 21st century and the volatility that we have. Uh, my promoter, Professor de Kooning, uh, that was instrumental not just in the book but also in the study preceding the book, uh, terms it very nicely when he tells us that by now most of us have become accustomed to the 21st century business challenges within which mechanistic and non-systemic success recipes to strategically manage institutions are failing. It's not all that new for him to say that though. Uh, for many years Peter Drucker has always uh, challenged organizations with the daunting challenge that we have to take this complexity that we need to manage within and break it down into what he termed manageable simplicity. But in a sense, descriptions by Drucker and the Kooning and possibly others shaped the background of what I try to address uh, in this book. Uh, I'm of the opinion that it's a very appropriate way in which to describe the challenges that we are facing and more specifically ask the question, what would be the correct manner to deal with this strategic challenge? This challenge that our current ways of thinking is seemingly uh, not enough. Now, part of the question sculpting the background of the book is based on the fact that the complexity that we have, seemingly the mechanistic approach to just break things down into smaller manageable bits, is not adequate, not enough. It's not giving us the solutions. We're not coming up with the recipes that we need. And therefore, I argue very strongly that not only do we require something new, but we probably need to require something totally different. <coughs> As the complexity that I refer to is not based on the sum of smaller bits, but rather emerges out of the interplay that we find between environmental systems constituting an interrelatedness and an interdependency. In the process, the Kuenen calls it the optimal floating equilibrium. That's what we need to try and find, almost moving alongside with the business environment, as opposed to sinking the environment into some sort of a factor of stability on which I then plan and forecast and execute my strategic planning. First and foremost, strategic thinking game over looks at environmental scanning frameworks. These are the scanning frameworks that companies typically use when they scan the environment. And this is but just a generic example. I chose to start with environmental scanning as this is the activity that's performed by most organizations for purposes of gathering information, both from the external environment as well as from the internal environment. The importance of scanning is very much embedded in its relation to business performance. It was very interesting for me during the period of the study preceding uh, the book to discover that ever since the first research was done on the correlation between business performance and environmental scanning, a positive correlation was yielded. The more I scan, the higher the likelihood or probability that I will increase my business performance. Business performance almost takes a seat right at the end of a number of sequential business activities. And what are those activities? Well, as mentioned, first and foremost, we have to scan the environment. Only then can organizations make a strategic selection. Uh, organizations prefer to call it an appropriate strategy selection. Uh, almost finding a fit between environment and what the organization can do. And then following that, you have as an outcome business performance. If our conceptualization of the environment and therefore our understanding of the environment is fundamentally flawed, you may find that the positive correlation in the earlier graph might start to do this, whereby the positive correlation regresses into a negative one. Now the benefit of the book, amidst the complexity of the 21st century, is what it provides the reader with is a scanning approach, a methodology, and a process, and also a conceptualized scanning framework. 
that allows for a better management of the complexity that organizations currently deal with in the 21st century. In doing so, it investigates two ways of thinking about the environment, not just about the environment, but also in terms of our approach to strategic planning. The one is the so-called reductionist approach, which really just comes from the word reduce, and it means that I break things down into smaller bits. Typically, your conceptualized scanning frameworks follows a reductionist approach. So I would take the environment and break it into segments and categories. I will use something like pestle and I have politics and economy and social <coughs> trend chains, buyers, suppliers, etc. So I break the environment into manageable bits. The second approach would be to manage by synthesis, meaning I apply what is commonly known as a systems thinking approach, whereby I rather try to, or let me say, whereby I also try to manage the interrelatedness and interdependencies that I referred to earlier on granting me a better understanding of an holistic environment, impacting on my informational compound, being more representative of the environment as what it really is, and leading to more enhanced and more appropriate strategic thinking. We went in terms of the research and had a look at how companies currently scan the environment. And it would appear that most organizations use tried and tested methodologies, such as Porter's Five Forces. Internally, they would use something like McKenzie's Seven S's. And also using the very well-known PESTEL as a, a way in which to categorize and segment the environment. The challenge that I address in the book, though, is that a conceptualization like this of the environment, first and foremost, is based, as I said, on a reductionist approach, breaking the environment into smaller manageable bits. Secondly, it is very much a one-dimensional view of the environment, which is viewing what is out there in the environment. A dimension that I introduce through the book is also not just to look at what we are viewing, but to also consider how we are viewing that environment. That's known as our individual filter or individual perspective, more commonly known as your world view. The idea of the book is to take that individual dimension and in a structured manner make it part of your conceptualization. And the challenge is in our brain in terms of the way in which it's been wired, we cannot unsee or unthink things. Rather, they need to be expanded or replaced. For decades, businesses have been using conceptualizations that looks more or less something like this. <coughs> if you use a conceptualization like this, it informs your strategic discussion. And therefore, it will inform your strategic behavior. So this is your, if this is your picture of the environment, then typically you're applying a mechanistic approach. You're not necessarily looking at it systemically. And if you continue using this over decades, it starts to foster the idea that the environment really looks like this. For the environment as we know it today is unpredictable, volatile, fast, random, extreme, in a word, dysfunctional and dynamic. Probably like you, I've also had enough of everybody telling me how volatile and random and unpredictable the environment is. So no, the book is not all about doom and gloom. It's not just about telling you what is wrong or what is challenging in the environment. It also elucidates two environmental characteristics, one being complexity and the other one being dynamism. And it provides the reader with a pathway of utilizing this and illustrating how it can positively impact on your strategic thinking. Complexity that we refer to in the book is primarily emerging systems complexes. Big word, all it refers to is those gray overlaps that you see there in the slide. That's the interrelatedness and interdependence between systems. That dimension of information I can only get by unearthing the information in that interrelatedness and interdependency itself. Now the question of course is how do I do it? Basically what you need to do is you take an environmental system and you break it into its qualities, its dimensions, its aspects, and its characteristics. Or let me rather say you analyze it in terms of those. Uh, for purposes of this morning's discussion, I crafted my own little acronym there. I talk about a QDAC. I thought it's easy to remember because it sounds like Kodak. Okay? So um, qualities, dimensions, aspects, characteristics. Now, each one of those systems that contributes to that overlap has got a QDAC, a set of QDAC. And so has the emerging systems complexes. The important point, however, is that the nature of the information of that overlap, of the in, uh, uh, emerging systems complexes, that's uh, 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 distinctly different as the, the QDAC in the co-contributing system. So again, I can't just add the parts. Again, enhancing the, uh, uh, enhancing the basket of information, contributing to more 
appropriate strategic selection. In uh, strategic thinking game over, dynamism basically refers to the phenomenon that a system can change in itself and it can also change in terms of its respective relation towards another system. And there we have identified uh, by means of the literature two levels of relational statuses to call it that. The one would be transactional and the other one contextual. In brief, a transactional relation means that I have a high level, a fairly strong level of influence over another system as a business. So something like my buyer, for instance, or my supplier, depending on which side of the table you sit. The second relationship would be a contextual one. Those would be systems over which I have uh, almost no control over or very little control over. But what we actually found in the research is that systems has got the ability to move and evolve. So they move out of a transactional space into a contextual space, asking businesses to employ a different strategic approach. You can't have the same strategic approach to systems in the transactional relational state as that in the contextual. The strategy in essence is the juncture between what the environment out there offers me in terms of opportunities and threats, but, but I can only make use of those opportunities based on what I can in terms of my own organizational ability. So I have a bit of a juncture there between the two, and in that lies my strategic selection. So based on all of the above, ladies and gentlemen, the book delivers a new kind of a framework uh, which tries to um, conceptualize all of these characteristics and concepts that we have come up with during the research. If I can just say the research that I'm referring to <coughs> along with uh, Stellenbosch uh, University and the Business School, I've done a seven-year research study working with 121 different organizations, both locally and internationally. So most of that findings uh, contributed to putting, putting together the book. Okay, so first and foremost, you have uh, the additional dimension of information, which would be that interrelatedness. This is just an example. At the end of the day, you will not take this framework and use this in your organization. You will draw your own framework. That's the first thing we tell organizations. We, in a structured way, deal with this individual viewing filter of the organization because different people see things differently, so we structure that, and by means of color coding it, it has a different meaning. Depending on that color code, we make provision for the dynamism of uh, environmental systems as they evolve from transactional into contextual, uh, impacting on their strategic thinking mode. The conceptual framework also makes provision for the evolved levels of development of the organization and also that of the system that it scans. And then we also, in terms of the variety of environmental systems, look at the different levels of those evolved systems. So uh, also taking that into account. Looking at the business environment and looking at organizations this way in the 21st century has a very positive impact on strategic thinking. But I'm very fortunate quite recently, and it's, uh, it's a good thing that we can share it today because it takes a lot of these concepts and it makes it practical. Uh, very recently I've been contacted by uh, a, an oil company in South Africa that has taken the concepts of the book and up to a large extent brought that to life. And that might help uh, to explain the so-called positive impact on strategic thinking that I'm talking about. What they in essence do is, yes, you have the external environment, you have the uh, internal environment. Most organizations has got, uh, have got dashboarding systems in the organization, so they get all the data internally, and that's fairly up to date on a daily basis. The challenge, however, is the external information. So what they've done is they, they almost converge their digital uh, systems, intelligence systems, with the physical structure of the organization. But what they then did is they, they really brought this environment in terms of the systems and the information that they gather, they make that live, so to speak, constantly measure the, measuring the probability of whatever it is that's supposed to happen there really happening. This will then run over a timeline. That has a certain impact on the business, either positive or negative. And that then gives you an indication of whether I, in terms of my current strategy, whether I have a go, whether I maybe should uh, think a bit and be more hesitant in terms of my step forward, or whether I should have a complete stop. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, I have said all along, I believe that if you read this book, it will fundamentally change the way in which you view business organizations and also the environment within which those organizations need to be managed. And my question to you today, or my request to you today, in terms of that statement I make is, take me up on it. Thank you very much. <laughs>